Hi, and welcome to Accelerate Presents. I'm Pete Quirello, and joining me is Dave Petorak. Today we're going to continue our series of four of the Microsoft System Center Service Manager Console. This is part two of ten. We're in the administration workspace, and we're going to cover announcements and the self-service portal. You can learn more about service manager implementation and training at Accelerate.com. Welcome, Dave. Hey, thanks, Pete. So let's get right into this uh, administration workspace. So we get to there, it's the default view when you come into Service Manager uh, Management Console. Uh, you can also get there by clicking on the administration blender bar. And here you go, this is all revealed in all its glory to you. These are all the items that you can work on in this workspace. Um, so the first thing uh, we're going to look at is um, announcements. Announcements are the first thing on the menu and basically this is where you can post messages to end users and IT analysts. You can create them, you can draft them, you can retire them, you can publish them, and they end up on the portals. There's an end user self-service portal, there's a IT analyst self-service portal, and you can create those announcements and push them out there for whatever useful information you find necessary to get out there. In addition to the announcement panel, there's the connectors panel. So you get in here and you'll see that there's a couple of different kinds of connectors we've defined. Uh, we've done that by, by clicking over here on the right-hand side, Create Connectors. Um, the most basic type of connector is an Active Directory connector. So we create an Active Directory connector. What that does is it, can it establishes a synchronization connection uh, that goes in and periodically synchronizes with Active Directory, pulls in all the users, the groups, the computers, um, the printers, etc., so that immediately you've got an instant CMDB, an instant database of all your relevant information that's live and active and dynamic. That is really cool. You know, we work with a lot of customers and to have that sort of instant CMDB uh, capability is fantastic. Um, in, in addition to the CMDB uh, through the, the Active Directory, additional information for configuration can be through System Center Configuration Manager Connector. So you spin up a Configuration Manager Connector, what does that do? It establishes a, a, a bi-directional interface with System Center Service uh, Configuration Manager that uh, brings in additional uh, configuration item information that's not in Active Directory for computers, certain settings, etc. And same for uh, System Center Operations Manager. You're going to have configuration information for a particular computer that um, you don't necessarily have in, in uh, SCCM or AD. That can get pulled over via the SCOM configuration item connector. And lastly, and not leastly, is the SCOM alert connector. What that does, and this is really cool, is you can, you can filter it, but basically you can set it up to get all your alerts that you want to be auto-ticketed as incidents in System Center Service Manager. So for example, you could tailor this uh, uh, to, to bring in alerts and all critical um, high severity alerts will be um, create a ticket automatically in System Center Service Manager. People can be notified and, and the workflow associated with the resolving that incident. It's really cool. Okay, deleted items we covered a little bit earlier in the in the prior uh, session. Very simple. Uh, when you, 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 if you've ever done it in Active Directory, it's the same sort of thing. You know, you want to be able to restore something. Oops, if you fat fingered something and deleted a configuration item that you didn't want to delete, you can come back in here and undelete it. Or if you want to permanently just delete it, you can. It's like the recycle bin for configuration items. Okay, so then let's move on to management packs. Pete? Okay, so management packs are basically XML files, and they store objects like classes, workflows, views, views, all sorts of different things, all sorts of different configuration information. Uh, you've got two kinds of management packs, as you can see here. You've got sealed and unsealed. And very simply, sealed management packs are uh, where a lot of the uh, sealed, man sealed management packs are not modifiable. So they come with the product. They will get upgraded with product upgrades in the future, unsealed management packs are where you're going to store your own custom configurations, and they're not going to be overwritten with product updates. So you'll, you'll, when you start to implement Service Manager, you'll need to give some thought to how you want to store uh, your custom configurations. There are a number of unsealed management packs that are provided by default where you can do that. And you'll see as you um, populate, uh, as you install, uh, service manager that uh, the default management packs, incident problem change will be in here. And uh, when you add additional products like the ITGRC management pack, the Provence uh, asset management management pack, 
um, you'll see the, the components of that get populated in here. Okay, um, notification speed. Okay, so uh, Service Manager allows you to send notifications which are based on certain criteria. Um, so, for example, if we had uh, an incident that had been assigned to a certain support group, we could send an email to a certain person or a group of people letting them know that that incident has been assigned to that support group. And within the notifications, we have channels. And the channels is the path for setting the notifications. And as you can see, we've got the email channel here. So this will, will allow us to send email notifications. We then have subscriptions which just uh, basically has the rules for who we're going to notify and uh, what criteria we're going to use to notify them. I just gave the example of the incident assigned to a support group. It could be a, a high-risk change. Um, very easy to create these rules, and you can use any of the values in any of the work items, incidents, problems, or changes. And last, we've got the templates. These are literally the email templates that you can use within the subscriptions. You can create as many of these as you'd like. You can customize them. You can uh, choose exactly what information you want to include. If you want to, to put values from fields for a specific work item in, you can do that. And of course, you can create them as generically as you want so that you can reuse the same template for multiple subscriptions. Very, very handy and very easy to do.